Hello everyone, how are we all doing today? Well, today, for me, is another rare treat. It's a day off work. And uh, I've not really got any plans as such. Just have a listen. I'm gonna let the bird song guide me today. But for today, we're in and around the birch trees that are starting to flourish. The greens are starting to pop. I'm really buzzing, I'm really made up to be here and see these colours starting to flourish. Now, the forecast today wasn't great, but as it turns out, we've got some light passing, which I love. Just the occasional glimpse and we're going to be doing quite a bit of stop and start and checking in the connections I have with each individual tree, I guess, from driving from home to here, Borrowdale, I've passed thousands of trees. So the question is, what makes that particular tree stand out? What, what resonates? Is it a subconscious thing or is it form and shape, texture, colour? It can be many things for many different people. I haven't really asked myself that question, why? I think sitting here now and considering it, it's the shapeliness, it's the contours and the way they lean and, and possibly colour and texture as well grabs my eye. I don't really look or fuss over foreground interest. There are some beautiful rocks. With a shot I've just took now, I've put a rock in the bottom right corner and these two birch leaning in from the left. I quite like this shot, but we'll see what it edits like, we'll see what we get. I just love to see those shapes and that bend and it caught my eye walking up here. And that's my first shot of today. We're not going up King's Howe, we're not going up that high today. I'm going to head round this way, there's, there's a plateau of rocks at the top, some gorse bushes. And I'm going to sit up there and have a good hour doing nothing. I'll probably talk to you guys a bit, but you know, I'm going to do nothing but sit on that rock and look around and, and just see and pick out details and then head back down and around here. And we may even head towards uh, the roadside and down to the river. I really don't know and I really don't care. So I hope you enjoy this and come along with me. And at the end, of course, stay tuned for the pictures at the end. Reach, I'll shut up, eh? Come on, let's get going. So driving in this morning, I passed through Chorley, passed through Preston, Lancaster, and there was like a sea frith, fog, basically, blowing in off the sea. And it, the light, what was coming as the sun rose, and, and just beautiful silhouettes of oak trees and beech and birch and you name it, hawthorn at one on the motorway, there's this hawthorn that I always see and I think, oh, look. and it's big for a hawthorn. And, uh, I drove past them all and now I'm here because I was doubting, I was questioning and thinking why go to Borrowdale today, why go and you know all I had in my mind was the colour and, and the first real changes of spring with the birch, the oak are not ready yet, there's a few odd flourishes but it was mainly about the birch and as I'm passing all this fog and light and beautiful I don't know the area, I don't know anywhere to go, and really, I would normally stop, change my whole day, you'd be watching a completely different video now. And for some reason, of late, I thought, no, keep with your first thoughts, keep going with what you set out to do today. That a mistake, could have been, could have been a mistake, but like I say, now I'm here, ah, oh, just wonderful, magical place. And I feel so relaxed. And I've not been, 
I've not been relaxed. Stuff's been really playing on my mind lately and photography is the key to getting rid of that. Gone. My goodness, look at that naked birch. Oh, I've just walked over this wee hill, heading towards the rocks to have my dinner. Oh, and the distance of the background to this tree, to this naked birch, is what is giving it separation. I'm not even sure, I'm not even sure why I'm so attracted to it. I just think this is just magnificent. I, I, I do know what's attracted to me. The punch of the, the white, the nakedness of the birch, and then the depth and darkness and different greens in the background, which I'm sure I can subdue even more, give more separation, uh, possibly underexposing it a tad. I've took a couple of shots already, but as I'm doing this video and I'm moving here, you can see I could possibly get a little bit more of the top in. I don't want the sky. As you can see, there's nothing in that sky. Completely flat. The sun's hazy. So it's a beautiful softbox today. About there. I'm possibly just either square or, yeah, thirds. Just off third. Quite like that. Right. Right, let's get the Z7 on this and get some real detail. Push in, underexpose, and get that naked birch popping. Beautiful scene. I'll put the image up at the end. Oh, things are getting serious. I'm playing with the drone and I've just heard one shouting profanities at me. I wouldn't mind. There's only me here, so they must be right down in the valley. Come on, I'm licensed. Anyway, I think I said earlier, I'm going to try and get this 16 by nine. I just love those birch, the group of birch there. Might work, might not, but let's have a go. Two time lapses, an hour I've been here. It's still going actually, so yeah, 50 minutes. Hopefully, it's a it's a spawner. It's spawn decking. And you'll have seen the time lapse because I do like putting them on at the beginning. So we're done. We're done. I think that that's me done. Now we can focus on the uh on the photography even more. And I'll tell you what I'm doing as and when we find a composition. There's gonna be a few today. Light's gone off a bit, clouds have come in, but not so worried because I'm just focusing on the the tree details today, the birch and the start of spring. Right, I think, I think I'm going on today. What do you reckon? Do you want to hear more? Do you want to hear less? Let me know in the comments down below. I won't be offended if you tell me to shut up. Don't tell me to shut up. Just give me a like, subscribe and shut up yourself. Say there. So we're back here today. I'm just downloading everything from yesterday's shoot over at Hard Knot, and um, I'm bushed. I will, I will tell there. I'm absolutely jiggered. So bear with, because I'm editing the uh, video today. I've procrastinated all week with this video. Ah, wrong word. It's been a struggle. That's all we'll say. But I'm here. I'm finally here. And what I'm talking about right now, as I've interrupted the video, is to talk about Continuum from First Man Photography, Adam. Why am I talking about it? Because he bought two of my images and they're up on his wall. That doesn't happen every day. And I'd been waiting and waiting and waiting for Adam to bring a, an image out that I connected with. Well, lo and behold, where we are, in this video is, is in Borrowdale, just below King's Howe, which is where Adam shot a video a while back. And the image that he put on Continuum to sell is the image I've got today, as you can see here. I'm so proud to have, 
to even have an image on Adam's wall, but the fact that the compliments and support he's given me over the years means so much. And me in this little old, me in this little room, getting the edits done. I actually can show you one of the images. I think it's really important to uh, print and keep on top of your work, picking out your favorite shots and, and then finally getting them framed, which is exactly where Adam's image is right now, getting framed, ready to go up on the wall in here. I just wanted to add this in to speak about what Adam's been doing with his, his uh, YouTube channel and addressing a lot of thoughts that I'm sure quite a few of us have and it is a very competitive place and I, I'm not competitive when it comes to photography. It, it, I just find that really hard to digest. Photography isn't a competition. But you've got to make your way in this world and I understand that you've got to be a part of the trend, ahead of the curve, up on the hill, all that stuff. And I just want to do what I want to do, which is produce photography, produce images, create. And to be recognised by a fellow photographer, a professional photographer in his field, a YouTube creator who is at the top um, <laughs> in, in what we do to be recognised was an honour and a privilege. And then to have the images on his wall in, in the past, God knows how many videos, blows my mind. So to return that, I had to connect with the image and the image means so much to me that you are seeing now because this area is a place that I just adore and will return to time and time again. Now, just to go into what I'm talking about a little more, about buying photography from your fellow photographers. God, that's a mouthful. I don't think it's something we do enough. And it feels that we don't want to buy other people's photography because of this competition. But I think the opposite, I think we should um, really go into looking at our uh, fellow photographers who, who we adore their work and, and get in touch and reach out and, and get an image of theirs on your wall, no matter how big or how small. And I've got quite a few images now by various photographers who I've met over the years. And to see the image in its final state printed, how they wanted it to look, it, it really changes your, your mind of your own photography. It changes how you think about what you're creating. Hold on, my dinner's ready. Don't, <laughs> I knew something had interrupt me. And not even the kids. Where was I? Where was I? Buying your fellow photographer's photography is a must. I think you can learn a lot from it and you're supporting someone who is in the same field as you and maybe a bit of karma and they'll support you or someone will support you back and buy a print from you. And it just that recycle, just that, you know, passing it on. <laughs> I know times are hard and it costs a lot of money to buy these prints sometimes. But even if you just get in touch and, and, and reach out and say, I'd love to buy that image and, and, and maybe even do a talk or a blog post and support each other, is key for me. And Adam is, is, like I say, one of the finest and up the top of the ladder in YouTube terms. And for him to reach out to me, um, he's so grounded and approachable and his book proves that with the stories of his time and the stories throughout his career so far. So thanks Adam and thanks to everyone who watches and, and, and that's enough. I think I think I'm, I've, I've over I've overstepped the chat there. This video is going to be about half an hour long and as you can hear from the voice I, I'm a bit done in today. 
Not sure if it's the five pints in the wool pack on Friday or if it was the quarter past five start on Saturday morning and getting home at around about 11 o'clock last night. I've got a video coming out about this. I do all this for very little return and as I've mentioned before, if you want to support me, you can click on the YouTube video and just give a quick donate, a pint or whatever. You know, price of a, a pair of socks would go down quite well. <sighs> Lovely socks. I dream of soft socks on a hike. Anyway, so if you want to support me, head over to Patreon or on my YouTube channel. You can become a member or you can click the share and support button just underneath the video. Thanks very much, Ray. Cook. Roll VT. Sit there. I'm going to stick my neck out line here and say, I think, <laughs> that's not sticking neck out line, is it? I think. I reckon. Oh, I've turned round and there's another. There's so many compositions here. This is why I've come back on to record because I often think of Home Fell as being a place that is just wonderful, birch filled with compositions. And I know he has been shot as well, but this feels so new and fresh to me. And it feels like somewhere I'm going to come back to more than home fell. Why? I'm, I'm in love. I'm in love with this place. I've just seen Twin Birch up there come down, so another composition. And then this. I've got to make sense of it and there's a beautiful wall here. So if we head down the key, I'm, I'm going down quite a way here now. And I can hear a stream and see it's flat there. So I'm about 60 meters off getting to the bottom. Um, I'm feeding my way back round. But I think I'm just gonna carry on on this path. But this, this has to be taken. What a scene. Simple though, from this angle, we've got the We've got the moss at uh, Leichen just glowing. The rocks coming down here. I, I just like those two birches again. I know two is a bit, they say look for threes and your halon tree and so, but these, these two really do, they just work. The, the different tones as well. Right, shut up. I'm going to take this shot and we'll keep mooching. And I don't want to, I don't want to get bogged down with too many compositions, but I can't help myself. I can't help it. It's just wonderful here. And I really am in love with this place. I think this particular area, it isn't Borrowdale, it's called Grange. But this side, I really don't know. It's like a, a lost kingdom. I'm waiting for, you know, dinosaurs and stuff to start jumping out on me. It's, it just looks back in time. Beautiful, beautiful. See there. So I'm done. If you've liked this, you know what to do. Hit like it, subscribe, uh, share it is a big one. It really helps if you share it um, because for some reason YouTube doesn't like me and uh, I don't like YouTube. <laughs> I'm joking. I love making these videos, but YouTube most definitely doesn't like me. Possibly because I don't um, have seven ways to, you know, you know what I'm saying. And all that business. And it's great if you want to learn, but I think learning is better by doing. You learn when you do, you learn when you see. So you've come along with me and hopefully you've got something from today. And if you have, that's what I'm, that's what I'm really, really happy about. Some of the messages I've had, people saying, 
I got inspired, I wanted to go out, and, and that's a big one. If you want to go out because of little old me going bonkers on a hill amongst these birch, job done. Thank you so much for your support. And well, there's only one thing left to say, and that's seagull. Seagulls? Surely not. So there, 